Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Pahoda. Today, I want to cover chapter two of my book, Word of Faith Preachers, How Misinterpretation of Scripture Might Lead You Astray. And we're going to continue our, our um, topic on tithing as opposed to New Testament giving. And today, chapter two of my book, we're going to talk about how do we give under grace or how do we give under the New Testament now? Because I talked about before in, in my first video of this series, I talked about tithing in chapter one of my book. I talked about how tithing was agricultural. It was food and livestock. It was never money and how that's been done away with. So now, so if we don't use tithing to give then, if you will, then how do you give according to the New Testament? Well, we're going to talk about that today. So on page 18 of my book, we're going to give a couple scriptures that actually in context, we're talking about giving under the, under the, under the umbrella, if you will, of the New Testament under, under grace. So the first one is found in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, and it reads, now this is Paul writing to the Corinthians. He says, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so I give to you, or even so do you. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. See, there you go. That there may be no gatherings when I come. So he's, Paul is saying, look, go ahead and gather this offering now because when I get there, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it when I get there. So go ahead and do it now. Okay. Now, a couple of things here. It says, first, now concerning the collection for the saints, if you go back and do some research about this, this collection was for the poor saints that were in Jerusalem, okay? So this was the body of Christ taking care of the body of Christ. More specifically, this was, they were taking care of the poor saints, the, the saints that didn't have much. So this was a collection where the body of Christ was taking care of the body of Christ, the poor body of Christ, if you will, okay? So that's the context. That's the purpose for this, for this um, collection. It wasn't so we can build a bigger building and have a million dollar edifices, which is another point in my book I'm going to talk about, you know, the millions of dollars that we're spending on these church buildings, okay? But anyway, so this was the saints taking care of the saints, in this case, the poor saints that were in Jerusalem. Now, it says, give according to the way the Lord has prospered you. I, that's how it says, it, I believe, in the King James. In the NIV, it says, give according to your ability, i.e., the ability in which the Lord has blessed you to give. Okay? Now, <clears throat> let's fast forward now to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. This is the God loves a cheerful giver part. Now, I, I guess Paul is rebuking him here because the Corinthians hadn't taken up the offering that Paul, was, Paul said back in 1 Corinthians. So Paul is basically saying, hey, you know, I, in my first letter, I told you all to give and you all didn't do it. So now I'm reminding you to do it again. Okay, so now Paul continues and says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. So this is the, basically the law of sowing and reaping. If you give a lot, you'll reap a lot. If you give little, you reap a little. Now I'm going to talk about how prosperity preachers misuse that. Now granted, in context, this was talking about financial giving. So that when it talks about sowing seeds here, it is talking about sowing financial seeds. So in context, the prosperity gospel preachers, they do indeed preach it in context correctly. Unfortunately, they take it to the extreme and they teach this giving to get stuff. And that's not what Paul is saying. Because again, the whole purpose for this, this, this collection was to take care of the poor saints that were in Jerusalem. It wasn't for personal gain. Even though Paul says that here, that was not the context. The, the context of this was to take care and to bless somebody else who was less fortunate. Okay, So, Paul goes on continues to say, Every man according as he was purposed in his heart. Okay, so this is something that you want to do, not something that you have to do. So you give according to your purpose in your heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, okay, or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. One translation says, don't give out of compulsion. Don't give because you feel forced, or you feel shamed, or you feel guilted by not giving. And in a lot of these churches that teach tithing, that's exactly what they do. They basically make you seem like you're an inferior Christian, like you're a second-class Christian, like you're somehow robbing God. I told you on the first on the first teaching I did of this, you know, Creflo Dollar said back in the day, in the late 90s, I think it was, 
He said, you know, he, if he had his way, he would, he would li line up all the non-tithers in his church and he would take out an Uzi and shoot them all. Now, granted, he was being facetious, but the fact that he would even say that just implies and shows how just devilishly warped this non-tithing belief is. I mean, that just shows how much he just doesn't love or doesn't care about non-tithers. Okay, the fact that he had even facetiously said he would take them out and shoot them. That's messed up, okay? But it goes to show how some of these preachers view tithing and how legalistic it was. I'll give you another example. And I had a personal, well, she's still my friend because she's still alive, thank God. About two or three years ago, I got a phone call from one of my female friends and she basically told me, she's like, Joe, I got stage three uh, breast cancer. And she, now she doesn't live near me in North Carolina. She lives in another state. So I wasn't physically around to help her, but she's like, Joe, I'm just calling you. She's like, you know, my, my, my stage three cancer is, is, is in remission and I'm getting better and the chemo is working. To make a long story short, it worked. She, you know, miraculously got covered through the chemo and everything. So she's fine now. But at the time she called me and she's like, Joe, I'm, I'm recovering from stage three breast cancer. And I'm just calling you to let you know that I, I went to my church here asking for help. And she's like, because of all my chemo treatments, Joe, I lost my job. I was in the hospital so much, and because of all these chemo appointments and stuff I had, I lost my job. So I didn't have any money coming in because I wasn't working anymore. And I went to the church to ask for financial help. And when I asked for help, the first question they asked me was, well, well, you know, Miss So-and-so, we looked at your tithing record, and we saw that you're, you haven't been tithing, you know, regularly or faithfully. You haven't been tithing like you should, so therefore we're not, we're not going to help you. Now keep in mind, this is a woman who has a head wrap on her head because she lost her hair because of the chemo. And they're saying, we can't financially help you because you're not a tither. Well, hello, she lost her job because of all the chemo appointments she had to do, church. So they use the tithe as a means to, to, to be legalistic about this, to not show love. And they said, well, be on your way. God bless you, sis. Have a nice day because you're not a tither. Which is, which is in direct violation of the book of James when the book of James says if you have the capacity or the ability to help and you say, God bless you, go your way, and you don't help them, James says you're in error. So they're, they're in direct violation of the book of James. And that's exactly what this church did all because of her tithing record. So now we're using tithing as a means to prove how much we love somebody. Saints, this is crazy. This is out of order. This is out of control. But unfortunately, that is exactly what that church did. Okay? So give according to the Lord has prospered you. Give according to your ability. That's how we give. And we give according to how the Holy Spirit is leading us. In Romans chapter 8, it says, Those who are led of the Spirit of the Lord are the sons of God. So you give of your want to. You give because you want to, not because you have to, not because you're forced. Okay? So number one, you give according to your ability. You give according to the way the Lord has prospered you. For instance, I'm not a millionaire, so I can't give a million dollars because I don't have a million dollars. I can only give to the level the Lord has prospered me. Now, with that being said, for some of you, you're not going to like this teaching. Why? Because for some of you, 10% may be too low. So you're actually given beneath your means. You're actually given beneath your ability. And the Holy Spirit might have been challenged you to give more than 10% for a long time. But because of this tithing rule, you're like, well, I gave my 10%. I did my job. I'm good. No, you're not good. Not if the Holy Spirit is telling you to give more. Now, for some of you that can't afford 10%, there's no condemnation that is in Christ Jesus. And that's the wonderful freedom and the liberty of this, this New Testament under grace, free will offering, giving. I don't have to do this under the law. I'm not cursed if I don't tithe. I give according to the way the Lord has prospered me. If it's less than 10%, that's fine. If it's more than 10%, that's also fine because I'm free in Christ. Okay? So number one, give according to your ability. Number two, give from a cheerful, grateful heart. You should want to give. This should be something that you want to do, not because you feel like you have to do because God's going to get you if you don't, or the church is going to get you if you don't, or the church is going to make you feel like you're a bad person if you don't. You give this because you want to, because you have a cheerful, wonderful, giving heart that wants to do it. Number three, again, because you want to, because you have a heart to, not because you are forced to. Again, not of compulsion or necessity or begrudgingly or feeling shamed or guilty if you don't. 
And number four, you give according to how you're being led of the Holy Spirit. This is what we, me and my wife do. If we go to a church or we go somewhere and I, and I feel like the Lord is saying give $100 and my wife says, I feel, honey, I believe the Lord is saying to give $150, then I go with the higher and I give $150. Okay, that's just kind of a rule that we do. We, we go with the higher one because we want to make sure that we're, you know, being obedient to the Lord. And, and I check with my wife and say, hey, babe, what do you think we should give? And if she says 150 and I say 100, I go with the 150. Yeah, I always, I always try to bless as much as we can. Now, if we can give 150, then this is no problem for me because, again, this is according to our ability. And I'm going to go with the higher number. Okay, so we give according to the way the, the Lord is, is leading us to do. Now, there's a lot of pastors that agree with me on this, but they won't teach it. They continue to teach tithing because they're afraid that if they teach this, the offerings will go down. Now, a couple things about that. Number one, pastor, if that's you, number one, you're not walking in the truth, and you're, but you're walking in fear instead, okay? Your preaching should not be dictated by fear, but it should be dictated by the love and the truth of God's word, not fear of what the people are going to do. So if you really believe that tithing went out with the law and we don't tithe anymore and we believe we should be giving under grace, under the New Testament, and you truly agree with what I'm saying, but you're like, well, I can't teach that because my people won't give anymore, then you're operating out of fear and not the, the, the provision of God. And you're in error there because the Bible does not give us the spirit of fear. So you got to get delivered from that, number one. Number two, this is what I say to you. If that's true, let's just say for the sake of argument, you're right, and people will stop giving less, or they, they'll, they'll give less now, and you're afraid of that. Well, the Bible says in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Okay, now granted, this is talking about salvation. It's not talking about money, but there's a, there's a concept there. When you truly teach people how to love and increase their love walk within them, if you will, then their giving will increase. When you love, you give. Here's an example. If you really truly love the, the, the unsaved people and you want them to get saved and you truly have a love for people, therefore you have a heart for evangelism, then ultimately your, your giving should give more towards missions because you love people enough that you want them to get saved. So the more you love and the more you care about people, the more you should want them to hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you truly do love people and you want that, then your giving should increase in order to affect missions and evangelism. We just read it in 1 Corinthians 16 and also 2 Corinthians chapter 9. If you, if you truly have a heart to bless the poor saints, in this case that were in Jerusalem, or if you really want to bless the poor saints that you're in your community, and you want to see the body of Christ blessed that are struggling and they're hurting, particularly if there's like a hurricane or a natural disaster or something like that, if you truly have a heart to really love those people, you're going to want to give to, to, to things that the churches and things that help them out. The more you love, the more you give. So if you're afraid, pastor, that the giving is going to go down, if you teach grace giving and New Testament giving as opposed to Old Testament tithing, and you're afraid that the giving will go down, pastor, I encourage you, teach a series on love. And what does it really truly mean to love your neighbor and to love your unsaved neighbor, the person that's next to you that's unsaved, and, and to love your enemies and all of that? If you truly teach on love, I'm telling you, when, when love is stirred up in a saint's heart, it's impossible for them not to give because they want to see the world saved. They want to see the people in the body of Christ taken care of. They don't want to see the brothers and sisters suffering. The Bible says, Rejoice for those who rejoice and mourn for those who mourn. So we're about comforting one another and admonishing one another and encouraging one another and taking care of one another. We want to lift our brothers and sisters up. So when we truly have a love walk increased in our heart, giving by default has to increase. So if you're afraid that your people are going to be cheapskates and stingy, then pastor, teach them how to love according to the love of God. Because the Bible says, how can you say you love God, but you hate your brother who you see every day? So if you really want the offering to increase, pastor, if that's really your problem, teach people how to love and get the love walk increased in their life. And lastly, point number three on that. I read a study years ago talking about only 20% of Christians actually tithe anyway. 
So pastor, you've been teaching tithing for 10, 20, 30 years. And if those stats are correct, 80% of the people that you're preaching to aren't doing what you're saying anyway. Meaning they're not buying the lie that you're selling anyway, which by the way, tithing and the way we're teaching it, 10% of your paycheck or 10% of all the income you have going in needs to go to the church. That is a false teaching. Again, we talked about this um, in my first video, chapter one of my book, that tithing was food and livestock. It was never money. So if you're teaching, you got to give 10% of your income to the local church and say that's what tithing in the Bible is. That is a false teaching. That is a lie. That is not what the biblical tithe was. Okay, and we talked about the last video how that's been done away with. So what's my point, Pastor? Even if you do teach that because you believe it to be true, the people are telling you they're not buying what you're selling anyway. So if you're afraid that the numbers will go down if you top, stop teaching tithing, only 20% of the people that you're teaching tithe anyway. So why not get everybody free and just teach the truth? They're not buying the lie anyway. So if they're not buying the lie, why don't you just give them the truth from the jump? Because they're not buying the lie you're selling. Now, some of you all, I love you, but I'm, I'm going to say this out of love. Some of you all keep teaching tithing because some of you all have a, have a genuine heart for the Lord and you believe it to be true. So you're like, I don't care if the people don't tithe. I don't care if 80% of people don't tithe. By God, I'm still going to teach tithing because tithing is the word of God. And I'm going to teach tithing even if only 20% do it and 80% don't. I don't care. I'm not going to be moved by people and I'm going to teach it anyway. Well, my brother... I applaud your courage. I applaud your faithfulness to the word of God. I, I Seriously, I genuinely appreciate your faithfulness to the word of God, but that's my point. What you're preaching is not the word of God. What you're teaching and believing is something that we, the body of Christ, have made up. And we're calling it tithing, and it's not biblical tithing. So you're not preaching the word of God. You're, 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 you're preaching the traditions of men. You're preaching the, the traditions that we, the body of Christ, have made up but you're not preaching the true biblical tithe. You're, you're preaching what we, the church, have made up, okay? And you're, you're forcing it on people, and it's a man-made, made-up doctrine that you're forcing on people. And like I said, only 20% of people are actually doing it anyway. So if you're afraid of the offering going down, why do you keep teaching it when only 20% of the people are doing it? Just give people the truth from the jump and, and set them free. Now, lastly... I talk about this in my book. Again, if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. A lot of prosperity preachers preach that to say, see saints, if you want a lot, you got to give a lot. So the way you get a harvest is you got to give your way to it. And a lot of these prosperity preachers, that's how they get their million dollar jets in their private jets in their you know, $250,000 Lamborghini cars and their $5 million houses is because a lot of these people have given to these guys and gals over the years, okay? And, it, and it, it's a system to give to get. You know, I'm going to give a lot so I can get a lot. Well, first of all, that wasn't even the context of 2 Corinthians 9. Again, the context there, they were giving so the poor people could get, so the poor people could be taken care of, not so I can get taken care of. Now, granted, there is a harvest, there is a blessing that comes back to me. Again, you reap what you sow, but that should never be the motivation, number one. Number two, <clears throat> there's a severe problem with that because, again, you should give according to the way the Lord has prospered you, not, not according to how you want to get and how you and you're getting it just to fulfill your own carnal desires in your own flesh in your own carnality saints that's no different from the world you know 50 cent the rapper came up with a song uh, an album years ago called you know die, get rich or die trying well these prosperity preachers are teaching the same message it's just reworded differently the bible says god will take care of fulfill all your need according to his riches and glory it says he will fulfill all your need it didn't say he'll fulfill all your greed and all your wants okay so when you give, God will supply all your need. It didn't say he'll supply your greed or supply your wants, okay? That is a misinterpretation of scripture, okay? And years ago, I made a video talking about Mike Murdoch and how we used to teach the Boaz anointing. And basically, every time God blesses Mike Murdoch, he'll bless you. Just like God blessed Boaz, and therefore, since he blessed Boaz, he, when, when Ruth married Boaz, and basically God you know, blessed Ruth because of her connection with Boaz, Basically, if you sow into Mike Murdoch's ministry, if you, if you, if you show, sow into the Inspiration Network, anytime God blesses Mike Murdoch, he's going to bless you. And he calls this the Boaz anointing. Saints, this is trash. 
That is absolutely garbage. There's no such thing as a Boaz anointing. And oh, by the way, and I said this in my last video, if you're saved, if you're a born again believer, you already are anointed. So now you're paying for anointings that you already are anointed. So you're paying for something that you don't have to pay for because of the death, burial, and resurrection in Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. You're already anointed. And because the Holy Spirit dwells inside of all believers, you're already anointed. So you're paying for something. You're giving for something that you already have because as a born-again believer, you're already anointed. So you got these prosperity preachers, you know, pimping the anointing and selling the anointing, which is what... You know, basically, the, the sorcerer in Acts tried to do, Simon the sorcerer, when he tried to buy the anointing. And I, I believe it was Peter or Paul that rebuked him for thinking he could buy the anointing. Well, that's exactly what these prosperity preachers do. They're like, oh, if you want to walk in healing like me, give to my ministry. If you want to have this prosperity anointing like me, give to my ministry. So if you want, if you want the anointing or mantle that's on my life, give to my ministry because that's how you can get what I have. So they're pimping this so-called anointing so they can keep getting money out of people. Because people in their carnality, they want to be the next Mike Murdoch. They want to be the next, you know, Creflo Dollar or Kenneth Copeland or Joyce Meyer or whatever. So they give to these ministries so they can have the anointing that they think they have. So you got these prosperity preachers pimping God, pimping the anointing, and getting money off of people because these fleshly, carnal, immature Christians want the anointing that they think they have. Saints, you should never give to that. Give according, again, to your ability. Give according to the way the Lord has prospered you from a cheerful, grateful heart because you want to, not because you have to, and because you're being led of the Holy Spirit, not being led of these false teachers that are pimping the anointing just so you can have what they have. So if you want to be able to heal people, give to Benny Hinn's ministry for an example which a lot of those healings really aren't healings anyway, because Justin Peters, by the way, did a great job of exposing all that. So a lot of that stuff is fake anyway. But that's what, for years, that's what these preachers preach. They're like, if you want my mantle, if you want what's on me, you have to give to me or give to my ministry, and that's how you can tap into the anointing that I have. Saints, that's a false teaching. That is a complete false teaching. And again, Philippians says, God will supply your need, not your greed or your wants. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there, okay? That's chapter two of my book, okay? So in the description, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the link to my book. I'm also going to put the link to Russell Kelly's book, Should the Church Teach Tithing? And we're going to continue in my book. That was chapter two. Chapter three is a real big one because some of you might be thinking, well, what about like Hebrews chapter seven when, you know, when, when Abraham tithed the Melchizedek? Is it, doesn't that basically prove that we should be tithing in the New Testament too, Joe? Next week, I'm going to talk about some of these excuses. I'm going to talk about Hebrews chapter 7. We are going to get into Hebrews chapter 7 next week. But until next time, again, give according to the way the Lord is telling you under grace and the new covenant. If this teaching has blessed you, would you consider hitting the like button and also hitting the red subscribe button? You know, that way I can get on the algorithm, but also too, so more people can get the truth of God's word and this video will go out. And please share this. Please share this with all the Christian friends that you have and just anybody you have. That way they can be enlightened by the truth of God's word. If you want to know more about me, if you feel led to give to this ministry, because I do have my own website, but I have to pay for that booger. Okay, so I have to pay for that website. So please go under YouTube under About. You can, I have my cash app there, but also you have my PayPal there, and you can give PayPal as well if you feel led to do so. So continue to continue to support this ministry. Continue to support your local church. Again, I am not against giving. I am for giving. I am absolutely for it. I'm just against forcing people to tithe. The tithe has been done away with. Malachi chapter 3 no longer exists. We don't have to do it, particularly since it was food and livestock and not money. So pastors love you, but please quit beating people over the head with the tithe. That tithe has been done away with. And I'm going to continue to prove that next week about, you know, because there is tithing scriptures in the New Testament. But there's a context there, and it's not what you think. So I hope you look forward to that. I'm going to bring that next week. That's, so that's chapter 1 and 2, an introduction to my book. Next week, we're going to deal with chapter 3. Until next time, God bless.